Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I'm here with a book haul. And today's book haul is going to be the books that I bought while I visited Hooked on Books in Wildwood, New Jersey, for the third time. Uh, the two visits that I paid there last year, I had such a good time and got such a great selection of books that I had to pay them another visit. And uh, I was definitely not disappointed. I got a wide array of books. And I'm going to show you the uh, books and novels first, then the short story collections slash uh, anthologies of prose, and then I'm going to cap it off with plays. And they have a great selection of all of that. The first book that I picked up is The Beast House by Richard Lehman, and uh, this is the... Uh, second book in the Beast House series. I read The Cellar, which is the first, and I thought it was a good book, and I felt that since I want to uh, incorporate everything that Richard Lehman has owned into my collection, uh, I have to, at some point, own everything from the Beast House series, and pick it up and read it when I get the opportunity. Yeah, but this is intriguing, and I definitely would like to uh, explore it as best as possible. Next book that I got, I did so on uh, quite a demand, and that is uh, A Series of Unfortunate Events, The Bad Beginning by Lemony Stickett. And uh, it seems like among the other gladiators, they want to go over a series of unfortunate events, and I think this is where we're going to begin. Uh, one of them may very well bring it up as a suggestion or a selection. Uh, I think that uh, it is something that is uh, worth looking into, and I'm going to take the opportunity to do so. Uh, uh, I don't think there's need for it. And I find it quite interesting that uh, Lemony Snicket's uh, uh, alias, uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel Handler, uh, he and I share the same birthday. So that always caught my attention. The next book that I got is Winter, a novel by Allie Smith. Uh, Ali Smith uh, wrote a series of books uh, pertaining to each of the four seasons. Uh, these books are often uh, recognized as uh, Man Booker nominees, or now just Booker nominees. Uh, so I thought it would be a good idea to look into this. Next one that I got is The Satanic Verses, a novel by Salman Rushdie. Uh, this has been deemed as a really uh, controversial work of his, but uh, Rushdie is a prominent figure in literature, and I think that it would be great to uh, look into him and his writing, and this is probably the uh, place where one should start. I want to be able to acquire uh, Virginia Woolf's writing because uh, Virginia Woolf is a remarkable writer and a remarkable mind. And so I picked up uh, Mrs. Dalloway and Three Guineas, which Perhaps at some point in time we'll uh, get to one or both of them on the show. Another writer that really caught my attention uh, after I finished reading the short story Sweat was Zora Neale Hurston. And I saw a lot of her books on uh, the shelves and I decided I'm going to take them all. So I picked up Jonah's Gourdvine, which is her very first novel. 
Mules and Men, which is uh, a, a book of uh, black American folklore. Dust Tracks on a Road, which is her autobiography. Their Eyes Were Watching God, which is her most noteworthy uh, novel and also her most noteworthy uh, work. And the complete stories of Zora Neale Hurston. I had one of them in the uh, anthology of uh, women's literature that I referred to uh, from Dover Thrift. And I probably had some of her literature sitting around in other anthologies or textbooks. And now I have it all. So I am happy. Moving on to short stories, I also picked up The Machineries of Joy, uh, which is a collection of short stories by Ray Bradbury. Because who can, who, you can't go wrong with Ray Bradbury. He's a genius. The more I read from him, the more I become immersed, and uh, he really offers that great sense of speculation and speaks for his time. Next one I picked up is the uh, Close Range Wyoming Stories by Annie Prohl. And this collection includes a total of 11 uh, short stories. Uh, the one that's most noteworthy is Brokeback, Brokeback Mountain, which was adapted into a film starring with Heath Ledger. And uh, the others include The half Skin Steer, The Mud Below, Job History, The Blood Bay, People in Hell Just Want to Drink of Water, The Bunchgrass Edge of the World, Parrot Spurs, A Lonely Coast, The Governors of Wyoming, 50 mi 50, and 55 Miles to the Gas Pump. And it's interesting that there is a short story collection with stories set in Wyoming because you don't get that a lot. And Wyoming is, the last time I checked, the least populated state of all the 50 states in America. Next one that I got is Mirror Work. 50 years of Indian writing from 1947 to 1997. Uh, which was edited by Salman Rushdie and Elizabeth West. And this includes a wide array of short works from uh, Indian writers. And I picked this up because I wanted to get a greater understanding of Indian literature. Uh, I think that there's so much to explore in here, and I would like to introduce myself to some more writers and perspectives. Uh, I really uh, eat up, eat these anthologies up with a spoon. Next one that I picked up is T.C. Boyle Stories. Uh, T.C. Boyle is a name that I often come across through uh, Best American Short Story Collections. Uh, other short story anthologies of the modern day. Yeah. I may have seen his name here and there when, in The New Yorker, uh, but this is definitely something worth uh, exploring and having many more of his writing, many more of his stories at hand. On the topic of the best American short stories and on the topic of Salman Rushdie, I picked up the Best American Short Stories, edited by Salman Rushdie. Uh, this is from 2008. And uh, Heidi Pittler, who's the series editor. I'm also an enthusiast for the Noor series. Uh, to me, if you put together a series and you put together a convincing enough argument as to why I should immerse myself, Chances are, I'm going to. 
and I picked up Haiti Noir, uh, which is uh, edited by Edwidge Danticat and uh, features Noir stories based in the uh, Caribbean island of Haiti, which this is really going to give me a greater understanding because most of the people that contributed to the series uh, were uh, from or live in uh, Haiti. Uh, Mark Kurlansky actually wrote a, a story in this collection as well, uh, though uh, Mark Kurlansky uh, spent time in Haiti uh, as a journalist. So. Next book that I picked up is Slave Narratives, which is a Library of America book uh, with uh, narratives by James Albert uh, Ukasaw, uh, Graniasaw, uh, Olada Iquiano, Nat Turner, Frederick Douglass, William Wells Brown, Henry Bibb, Sojourner Truth, William and Ellen Craft, Harriet A. Jacobs, and Jacob D. Green. And I'm inclined to really get a greater understanding of their perspective and what they had to endure uh, during such a brutal period of time. Next book that I got is The Portable American Realism Reader. Uh, this book, uh, I, we did go over realism in uh, American Literature 2. Uh, that's what kicked off the class. And... Uh, this, in this includes a wide array of uh, works. Uh, I really want to get into it a little bit more because you had this, you had naturalism, you had modernism, and you had postmodernism. And realism wasn't always the most intriguing because its content is somewhat dry, but at the same time, it's very important in order to uh, better understand what was going on in America during the uh, time period that is being highlighted. And in this case, uh, between the years of 1865 and 1918. Next book that I got is the Victorian fairy tale book, which is part of the Pantheon collection of fairy tales and folk tales. Uh, this was put together by Michael Patrick Cairn and features fairy tales from some relatively familiar names like Robert Browning, Charles Dickens, Christina Rossetti, W.B. Yeats, Oscar Wilde, and so many more. And some of them are even illustrated. Now we're going to move on to the plays, which uh, uh, Hooked on Books really has a great selection. Uh, and they even had dramatists play circus plays. So I picked two more of them up. Uh, one of which is uh, Quivocation by Bill Kane. And the other is Flyin' West by Pearl Cleage. I picked up the complete plays of Christopher Marlowe, because Marlowe is an incredibly important figure in uh, the liter uh, during the uh, during his time period. Uh, it was Christopher Marlowe who was the uh, highlight playwright during Shakespeare's lifetime, even though Shakespeare has become the epitome of how we see literature across the globe. But this includes everything, his, this includes all of the plays he's written, and that includes Dido, Queen of Carthage. Tamburlaine the Great, Part 1, Tamburlaine the Great, Part 2, 
the Jew of Malta, Dr. Faustus, Edward II, and the Massacre at Paris. Next book that I got is Naked Masks, five plays by Luigi Pirandello. Pirandello. And this was edited and introduced by Eric Bentley, who was a uh, premier uh, theater critic, play anthologist, and so much more. Uh, and Eric Bentley, at the time that I'm filming this video, is still alive. Uh, he's uh, he just turned 100. But this particular collection includes uh, Leola, It Is So, If You Think So, Henry IV, Six Characters in Search of an Author, and Each in His Own Way. Next, the next play collection that I picked up is Six Plays of Clifford Oditz, uh, with an introduction by Harold Clorman. Uh, this includes Waiting for Lefty, Awake and Sing, Till the Day I Die, Paradise Lost, Golden Boy, and Rocket to the Moon. And the last book that I picked up is The Best Plays of 1954 to 1955, edited by Louis Cronenberger. And this includes uh, the Yearbook of Plays. Uh, this includes 10 Best Plays of the Year. The uh, Summary of Seasons in Different Areas. And... All types of information pertaining to plays during that year. And it also makes mention to some uh, uh, particular publishers that I uh, started looking into. Uh, Dramatist Play Service, which I knew about before, but Samuel French is someone that I looked at. I didn't know if I was going to get into it, but after I saw it mentioned in here, being a a uh, key uh, figure in publishing plays, and the fact that it's been active since 1830, I decided I would check that out as well and start an account with them. I'm part of the 1830 club, too. Those are the books that I got while I was at Hooked on Books in Wildwood. I definitely would like to go back sometime. Uh, and I'm definitely bound to get more books when I pay a visit. Thank you for tuning into this video, and for now, keep reading.